A couple of years back, a poll was created about the 100 most famous Finnish people. And in at number 34 was this man, famous for assassinating the Russian Governor General of Finland, Nikolai Bobrikov. Between 1809 and 1917, Finland was an autonomous Grand Duchy within the Russian Empire. From 1899, the Russian Tsar Nicholas II pursued a policy of Russification, aimed at eliminating Finland's political autonomy and relegating it to the same status as other provinces of the empire. In 1898, the Tsar appointed Nikolai Bobrikov as the Governor General of Finland, with powers to implement his policies. Bobrikov's first major act was the February Manifesto, which asserted the right of the imperial government to rule Finland without reference to the Finnish legislature. This was followed by the Language Manifesto, which mandated Russian as the official language of the administration. Another of Bobrikov's initiatives was to make Finnish men liable for conscription into the Russian army. Bobrikov's measures led to widespread resistance. Most of the resistance was peaceful and included strikes, petitions and the evasion of military service. But a minority of Finns sought more violent action. Shooting clubs sprang up throughout the country. Schaumann, a Swedish-speaking Finnish civil servant and ardent nationalist, was a member of one such shooting club. Although he claimed that he was not party to any conspiracy and that he actually acted alone. An important difference between the activists' plans and that of Schaumann was that Schaumann had no intention of actually escaping. The activists saw themselves as being in total war with Russia, and their aim was to avoid needless losses among their own numbers. Schaumann, on the other hand, was prepared to take full responsibility for his actions by taking his own life after the murder. He expressed this in the letter to the Tsar. It is terrible to take the life of another person. With my own life, I will pay for my crime. As I have made this decision, I have been at peace, calmly and happily, I will go to my death. At about 11 a.m. on Thursday, the 16th of June, Bobrikov arrived at the Senate for the economic board session. He and his entourage walked through the Senate square. Schaumann was watching Bobrikov from a top floor window. Bobrikov entered the building alone and started walking slowly up the stairs. He was wearing his uniform and a military overcoat and was carrying a briefcase and a walking stick. Schaumann withdrew from the window and started down the stairs towards Bobrikov. As Schaumann was hurrying down the stairs, he met an employee of his acquaintance who asked him where he was going. Schaumann replied, I have no time for that now. Schaumann met Bobrikov on the second floor of the staircase. He drew his pistol and stepped in front of Bobrikov. He had earlier asked a doctor friend where to shoot for the wounds to be fatal. He now fired three shots in accordance with the doctor's advice. One bullet ricocheted off a button on Bobrikov's uniform, the second off the large cross of Saint Vladimir which Bobrikov wore on his chest, scratching his neck. The third and fatal bullet hit the buckle of Bobrikov's belt, which shattered. That bullet and parts of the buckle entered Bobrikov's stomach. Schaumann then took a couple of steps back and fired two shots into his own heart. He died instantly. Bobrikov remained standing. He staggered into the session hall of the Senate, dazed and with his hand pressed against his neck. With an attendant offered to help, he replied, It's nothing. He told the senators, I am not wounded. Bobrikov was taken to the hospital in Ulanlina. The operation was performed by the hospital's senior physician. However, his internal organs were so badly damaged that it was impossible to save him. Bobrikov died at 1am the following morning. The public was informed of the operation from the windows of the hospital. Schaumann became a national hero overnight and pictures of him appeared throughout the city of Helsinki without action on the part of the authorities. People celebrated openly without fear of repercussions. In due course, the letter that Schaumann had addressed to the Tsar became public. In his letter, Schaumann attempted to justify the murder, blaming Bobrikov for illegal actions. 
The letter also sought to draw the Tsar's attention to serious problems throughout the Russian Empire, specifically in Poland and the Baltic countries. Schaumann made the point that he had been a loyal subject of the Tsar rather than a rebel and that he maintained his belief in the inherent goodness of the Tsar. He stressed he had acted alone and especially that his family had no part in his actions. After his death, several philosophical writings by Schaumann came to light. These demonstrate that he had been a thoughtful man. One piece written a couple of days before the murder explains Schaumann's motive. He wrote, Freedom is its own end, with certain, rather small limits. It is an inherent right of all people, which no external force can remove. A person has no right to give this right away from themselves, even less from their children. Freedom is the base of self-esteem, and without it, the teaching of a person's chast responsibility would be nothing but lies and deception. Freedom is a sacred thing, and the love of freedom is a natural instinct deeply integrated into our hearts. Do you love your country? Good. Remember this, even if you had given all, but not your own life, you would have given nothing.